Hello everyone, I've got a product review uh, to do for you today. Arteza reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and asked if I was interested in doing a review of some of their products. Um, they were very generous in allowing me to choose the products that I wanted to review. I have been approached in the past by companies um, and I've always said no because um, I just feel that unless it's something that I would personally use then you know what's the point of me reviewing something that I'm never going to use again. But you know a acrylic paints, acrylic um, paper, you know, what more can I say? So of course I agreed. Now they have sent me the set of 60 acrylic paints um, in 22 mil tubes. So we'll have a look at these. They also sent me um, a set of 36 of the metallic paints, again in 22 mil tubes. And they also sent me um, two packs of um, acrylic paper as well. These come as a two set. Um, you get 16 sheets in each pack. Um, this is A3 size which is 11.7 by 16 and a half inches and this is 400 GSM. Now to compare this you all know how much I love my De La Rowney mixed media paper so this is the normal paper that I would use. <coughs> So how does it compare? The De La Rowney is 250 GSM, 169 pounds, same size here, um, whereas this is 400 GSM, 246 pounds. So this is considerably um, heavier weight. Now this is slightly different to mixed media paper in that this feels more like a canvas. Um, there's no point me holding this up to you because I've already tested it, you can't see it, but it's sort of like gridded, like a canvas. And if I rub my nails down it, I don't know whether you can um, hear that texture so it's a very very textured um, paper um, on the one side smooth on the back but it just it's nice bright white not that that makes any difference because I'm going to cover it with paint anyway um, but it's just a really really nice weight so I'm quite excited about I using spent this. a couple of hours yesterday playing around with these products because I wanted to see how the paper performed I wanted to get used to the colors as well just so that I can give you an honest review which I'll give you at the end of the video um, but this is the acrylic paper pad and I have to say this took me a little while to get used to because I decided I was going to do a masterboard doing one of my usual techniques and um, spreading paint on with one of these um, key cards um, store cards um, and because of the texture in the background the paint didn't go on as easily as it would with regular mixed media paper um, but having said that once I got Got used to it and with a bit of extra work the results are just absolutely beautiful and you get results that you wouldn't achieve with mixed media paper as well I'm not sure whether I would recommend this for complete beginners but let me just show you um, you can just see the texture from the gridded pattern on the mixed media paper so this is what I was talking about earlier and which I really couldn't show you it shows up much better um, now that it's got paint on but look at this um, it really is quite lovely and you, you, you just wouldn't get this with um, normal mixed media paper so that is really interesting I think um, and quite quite lovely um, here it is in this corner here so you know just showing various parts of that piece of paper um, I love these colors they're rich they're vibrant absolutely beautiful um, I also tried it with some of the darker colors um, and I also tried stamping and stenciling on this as well um, stamping and stenciling works in pretty much the same way as it would on mixed media paper these colors are darker of course um, so we've got stamping here and we've got stenciling so you know that's how that looks but again um, you can pick up some of this lovely texture um, this is just another background I did using the um, scraping technique and again um, darker colors um, more autumnal winter type colors but again you can see all the lovely texture and pattern in the background I just think that is just absolutely lovely I also wanted to compare the difference between the acrylic paper and regular mixed media paper so this is my De La Rowney and this is the one that Arteza sent me. Um, this is much thicker, um, this is much flimsier. Um, same colours used, same stamps, same stencils. What do you think? Can you see a difference? 
Um, do you have a preference over one or the other? Let me just hold them up a bit closer so that you can see. So that's the acrylic paper pad. Um, that's the mixed media pad. So so that's those. So try doing an ombre effect on both mixed media paper and the acrylic paper here, just so that you could see the difference. Now, I don't know whether um, it's just me, but I just think these seem to come out brighter. The paper is shinier, that's for sure the ombre was not as easy to um, blend on the acrylic paper as it was on mixed media paper so again you know if you are a beginner then I'm not sure that the acrylic paper is quite right for you if you want some interesting texture then I would certainly give it a go you can see the grid marks here which I really really like so you know that's the difference um, there Brayering paints onto the acrylic paper. Um, I used a mixture of blues, um, a couple of different shades of blues, some pinks, um, purples, and some white. Um, the texture on this is really rough, absolutely amazing. I really like this. Um, so, you know, that's just crying out for some kind of cool focal image. And then finally, I tried it on a regular piece of um, cardstock. Let me just turn this around in various directions. I used ultramarine blue and phthalo blue I think for this with the neon pink I just absolutely love that neon pink the blues I scraped on with a credit card again and the pink I just um, blended with my finger I think those make a lovely colour combination um, now I've done a finished piece so I'm just going to talk you through this right now and then I'll give you my honest um, review at the end of the video now, following my experiments, I want to create a small finished piece here. I've cut a piece of the acrylic paper to six inches by four inches, and I'm just trying to create a blended background. I've got four colors here, magenta, dark blue, light blue, and light green. And I'm just blending these colors on the page with a dampened paintbrush. So starting off with the magenta at the top, then blending in that dark blue, going backwards and forwards until the paints are blended the way that um, I like it. So um, magenta first, then the dark blue, then going back in with some of the magenta and just trying to blend that a little bit better. Then I add the light blue and finally the green. Now the paint will only blend this way if the paint is either watered down or you're using a damp paintbrush. So if you want to try this yourself with any other brand of paint, um, just either make sure that you've sprayed your paints first or you're using a damp paintbrush as I'm doing here. Now my background is dry and I don't want to waste the paints that I was using earlier so I'm just spraying them with a bit of water to make them more fluid and I've got a couple of very fine paint brushes here. I've got one that Linda Cooper Pierce gave me um, that came out of a nail art set with very very fine bristles, quite um, a long tipped paintbrush um, and I'm just making some um, flower stems here very loosely using all of those colours just um, with a really really light touch. I'm using all of the colours of the leftover paint and I want some of the stems in the background, some in the centre and some in the foreground. I'm not going about this in any particular order um, because I want it to be um, more, more random so I'm being really loose and choppy about this going you know left to right and in the centre um, you know just really really random and crossing the stems over as you can see as well. Now I feel as if I want to add a slightly darker green so I just add that randomly over the painting as well. This painting is depicting wild flowers and so I use the leftover watered down paint to add some splatters again in all of the colours that are left over um, and it's just starting to look really really pretty. 
Now before I start working on the focal point of this painting, I mop up all of the leftover paint, just tapping it onto the background drop paper here, um, which looks really, really pretty. Then move that out of the way before spraying the palette paper with water and just wiping off the excess paint so that I can use it again. Now I want to come in with some of the metallic colors. I want to add a sun or a moon to the center of my paint. I start off with this um, light purple and use that, add that in a swirly motion. It's not quite dark enough so I end up going over it again with a slightly deeper purple. You'll see later um, I change my mind again. I am really <laughs> indecisive as to what colour I want my um, sun stroke moon to be, whichever way you want to see this, whether you know it's a sunny day or whether um, it's, it's a sunset open to interpretation. And you can see here that I'm laying out some more colours of these beautiful metallic paints and the neon pink. I think the neon pink is my favourite colour out of both of these palettes. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now I've got my crystallite um, crochet hooks here which have a flat bottom and I use these for dot painting. And so I'm adding some abstract flowers to the painting, starting off with that beautiful, beautiful neon pink um, and then just randomly adding the other colours in various sizes of crochet hooks um, and also using uh, my stylus as well. So I'm happy with the flowers now. That just looks so beautiful to me. Um, but I want to brighten up the sun. So I've added a spot of titanium white to the palette here. Um, and I'm just going to add a touch of that over the purple in a circular motion again. I do end up adding some gold a bit later too. Um, and I decide to add some white dots to the skyline just to brighten that up slightly. And then decide to add a few white splatters as well and then to finish off my painting I want to frame my piece no piece of mine is ever complete unless it's got um, a frame so I use some stays on um, ink in royal purple just to frame my piece Here is my finished piece. I just absolutely love this. I mean, you know, that's just gorgeous. The colours are vibrant, really, really pretty. Um, but before I give my um, end review and honest opinion on these products, I just want to say um, that Arteza were very clear that they wanted me to give you a very genuine and um, honest opinion. Um, I'm not being paid for this, although I have been sent the products free of charge. What are my thoughts regarding the paints? Well, to start off, with I think they're really really good quality um, no issues there whatsoever so that um, is the colors um, swatched onto mixed media paper this is just my regular De La Rowney um, and these are the colors swatched onto black so really vibrant really, really opaque you know no qualms there um, I would say though that a lot of the colors are very samey or very dark I mean for instance here we've got four reds um, and you know they're all very very similar um, the blues are very dark I mean this being the lightest color here the same with the greens this being the most vibrant green um, too many browns for you know my liking in a mixed-media palette um, 
these are the colours that I would like to see introduced. Um, these are a mix, mixture of Liquitex, Amsterdam, um, Dina Wakeley, and these are the colours that I use on a regular basis, amongst others, of course. Um, but turquoise, I'd love to see a turquoise in this. Um, sky blue light, um, again, you know, I'd love to see that um, introduced. Um, the Dina Wakeley magenta is very similar to this one here. I think this is rose, so that's okay. I'd like to see a slightly brighter orange. I'd like to see um, a lavender colour. Um, I mean, this one here being the lightest um, purple colour, um, I think they need to go down and introduce some lighter colours. Um, and I'd also love to see a proper green yellow as well. Um, so, you know, that's just my honest opinion there. As the metallic colours are concerned, I'm really impressed with these. I just think the palette, the colour palette is just just absolutely beautiful I mean how gorgeous um, is that a really good mixture of colors that all work really nicely together um, this is what they look like on black really shiny I love those um, and I just love how they work in a finished pro uh, project as well. So, of course, you know, here you saw me use the regular colours and the metallics together. Um, and I just think that's absolutely beautiful. This is what the packaging of the paints is like. I'm showing you the metallic um, colours first, um, just because they're smaller and easier to fit under the camera. They come in trays. The regular acrylics are exactly the same. And what I like about this is that they're in colour families. So you've got the pinks, you've got greens, you've got blues, um, you've got yellows um, and the silvers here. Just really nice. That's the way I like to work. So I think the organisation of these is brilliant. Um, you've got some important information on the lid of the box as well. You've got light fastness ratings for those of you that sell your work and are, you know, perhaps professional artists. This is not so important to me. I tend to use colours that I like. I don't sell my work I tend to work in my journal um, but um, just to give you um, an indication as to how this works three means that the colors are really light fast two um, means that they're medium one means that they're not going to last as long these are all um, threes and twos um, and that's listed by color you've also got transparency rating which again is really important um, the full block here meaning that um, a colour is completely opaque um, half a block here meaning that it's semi-opaque semi-translucent and um, an open block here meaning that it's a transparent colour these are all um, opaque or semi-opaque um, you'll find that different with the regular acrylics here where you've got some um, completely translucent colours not too many here we go ultramarine blue is a translucent color um, oxide yellow so you know that's just really useful you've also got the um, pigment number I'm not a trained artist so you know that really isn't relevant it doesn't really mean too much to me but I know it will to some of you to summarize I really like the Arteza products that I've reviewed for you today um, especially the metallic colors I just thought the palette was absolutely beautiful I really enjoyed using the regular acrylics as well although I would like to see some lighter colours um, introduced and I really enjoyed the acrylic paper as well although as I've said I'm not sure it's suitable for complete beginners um, just because it was more challenging to use albeit um, you know you get some absolutely fantastic and um, interesting texture um, as well. I will leave links to the Arteza stores in the description box below for both the UK and US. They are affiliate links, meaning that I will earn a small commission based on any purchases you make via my links. Arteza are also offering a 10% discount for a limited period of time. I hope you enjoyed that review. Um, do let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.